two types of trunks you can make that uh, we use commonly. One is an analog trunk. This is if you're using an actual uh, analog telephone line to reach your phone system. Um, this is the this technology is going away, but it still works. It's still fine. You select how many lines you have coming in. You give it a name. We call it Anna One. And the only real thing you need to double check on this um, in the U.S. you want to double check your caller ID. If your trunk has caller, if your lines have caller ID, you make sure this is checked. If your lines don't have caller ID, you make sure it's unchecked. Otherwise, it won't work. And the other thing is the caller ID scheme. Belcor Tel Telcordia is the default one for the U.S. And your tone country, I'm set to U.S. So if you're in another country, you may need to change this. Um, and you may need to change this. For those of us in the U.S. that use caller ID on all of our lines, everything default should work. You just check the lines you want to use and hit save. For VoIP trunks. Um, this is where it gets a little trickier. The trunk group can be used to add VoIP trunks that allow for only one concurrent call per channel. And you can add multiple channels to a single trunk so you don't have to create five different inbound routes and, and five different failover routes on outbound routes. You just create one trunk group and use it as one trunk. Um, I'm not going to make this today, but you can add multiple user IDs as many as you need for each trunk you want to enter for a single host. Um, it's kind of cool. I haven't used it yet. It's a new feature. Um, but uh, from what I've heard, it works just fine. We're going to add a regular SIP trunk here. And the SIP trunk settings for each provider um, may be different. The one I'm going to show you is uh, a company we like to use called Next Vortex. Props to you, Next Vortex. You do a great job. We really appreciate you. Um, so let's look at that. We're going to call this trunk PX1. Now, what we use is two concurrent trunks, two side by side trunks that have unlimited concurrent calls um, as failovers. So we're going to create both trunks just to show you what that looks like um, so that you can see it. And this is information you will get from your provider. I know my provider's host name. Each one is going to be different. Um, and these settings here are up to you. Now, NAT is typically left off now. You don't check that unless you have a specific reason to. Um, keep original caller ID. That's if you want to retain the original caller's caller ID when passing a call through out to somebody else. And I like to do that. Keep trunk call ID, that means no matter what call goes out, it's going to change it to the DOD, to the caller ID number that's assigned to the trunk. I don't do that. I want the original caller ID kept if possible. Caller ID and caller ID name, um, these are only typed in if you need to. Um, oh, I didn't change my trunk. The, uh, I'm going to back up here at the top. What kind of trunk, do you, what type do you need to create? You have a peered trunk or a registered trunk. A peered trunk requires no credentials. Um, and sometimes that's exactly what you need. For these trunks that we're going to create today, we're going to do the registered trunk with credentials. It adds a few more lines and gives me a username, password, and auth ID. Still the same provider name, still the same host name, still the same options here. But once you get down to here, you decide if your trunk needs registration or not. Um, I usually check it. I don't have to, but I choose to. Um, and I also check this. Allow outgoing calls if registration fails. Even if the registration isn't working right, I don't care. I want it to still try to send the call with the credentials. And it will. So regardless if the receiving end is giving me confirmation that I'm registered, it's still going to keep sending calls. And uh, for this service, it works great. Again, caller ID, name, and number I'm not going to mess with. Uh, username, I have uh, off to the side here. I'm going to paste it in. And the auth ID is the same as the username. The password, you don't get to know. It goes right there. The uh, 
auth trunk. This is an optional setting based on your SIP provider. If they need, um, the UCM will send a 401 response to incoming calls to authenticate the trunk. Not every SIP provider needs it, but some of them do. And you've got to figure that out for yourself. Auto record. This is the most common way I record things. I make a trunk and I click auto record. Every single call passing through this trunk gets recorded. And there's another setting I changed elsewhere that announces to everybody that calls may be recorded. Direct callback, this is a new feature. I haven't tested it yet, but I'm excited to try. It allows external numbers the option to get directed to the extension that last called them. So if I called you from extension 203, you call back in, it will redirect you, give you the option at least to, to, to reach that person that just called you based on your call ID. So kind of neat. Um, I'm excited to try it. It's a very new feature on this system. So that'll be really neat. I'd like to point out at the top, there are no extra tabs here when you're creating a trunk. So after you save it, it's, it's warning me here that this is a, not an IP address, it's a DNS name. So that's okay. After you create your trunk, you go back in to edit it. And now we've got our advanced tab. I go to the advanced tab and I check this box, enable heartbeat detection. There's some more settings here you can mess with if you want. I don't mess with them uh, uh, by default just to get calls coming in and going out. The trunk itself can detect faxes if you want and direct wherever you want it to go, things like that. The maximum number of calls per, per line. If this trunk was a, a limited trunk and it could only do two calls at a time or one call at a time, you change this number. Uh, we're unlimited, so I leave it at zero. Right. I'm going to do that exact same thing with my second trunk, but a little bit faster. So this is the secondary trunk they use for failover. Original caller ID, registration, save, go back in, advanced, enable heartbeat detection. This helps me monitor the trunk on the dashboard better. So as soon as I apply this, um, these, these settings are going to try to register to my provider. But my provider won't know how to get back to me. It needs to know who to reply to. Who do I tell that, that I've got the registration? Um, the signaling that it gets will tell it my local address here. And I don't need it to know that. I need it to know my public address. So we're going to go into PBX settings, SIP settings, and the NAT tab. In, in the... Wait, in time past, we used to check that NAT setting on the trunk, and that would send, help send this external host address. Now they have this special checkbox here, use IP in SDP, and you check it. And that says, send whatever number I put in here, or a dynamic DNS address, or whatever I put in here, I want to send with my packets to say, hey, this is where you reply to when contact. <laughs> is hopefully blurred out but if not it's fine this is our test system so uh, it changes frequently now my local network is here now, I have phones across my 10 11 12 I have all across the system so I'm going to type in 172 30 0, 0 slash 16 and that covers anything in the 172.30 subnet is considered local to me. So it doesn't need to tell anything that's coming from here about this address. And anything that's going outside doesn't need to know about these addresses. And that's kind of how it separates it for us and tells the right, right entities the right information. Now this setting is going to require me to reboot the system. But I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to apply my changes first so I don't lose my other settings. 
and then it's going to prompt for a reboot again. And upon coming back up, my trunks should register. So I'm going to pause, and we'll be right back. All right, reboot is done. We're going to log back in here. And it's going to take us right to that dashboard. And you can see the, the trunks we've made. And the analog line tells me there's nothing available because there's nothing plugged into those. We can see PX1 and PX5 went blue. We can hover over that and see registered and registered. This means that I've got my firewall settings right and I've got my NAT settings right that we just that we just changed. The firewall settings are something completely different. Um, you've got to have the access from the outside world in through your firewall and point traffic on, on your on your SIP port, which by default is 5060, and your RTP streams, which is by default are, are 10,000 to 20,000 and have those forwarded straight to your phone system. Um, and if that's not in place, your trunks will not register. Uh, that, that'll be shown in a separate video. Now, now that we've got our trunks made, we can move on to the next step. That step is inbound routes. So let's, oh, let's look at this one. So we've created our trunks. Now we can do our outbound and inbound routes. And uh, we already talked about if we're using SIP trunks, let's set up that external host. Um, again, that's in PBX SIP NAT if you didn't catch it before. All right.